Congrats on making it to video number two. I always try to say thank you and good job to the people who make it this far because I understand getting started with programming can be a little bit much, but I'm gonna try to make it simple for you guys and we're going to start learning about lists. So in Python or pretty much any programming language, you're often going to want to group things together. And the easiest way to do this is to use some sort of collection. Collection is the more general term to describe something that holds a lot of stuff. You know, you can think of like in real life, you can have a bucket, you could have a bag or a box, and you understand how these things work in real life, you put stuff inside of them. They act as a collection of items. And the same thing needs to happen in programming. So the very first thing is you need to get this Python extension so you can just search Python and download that. That allows you to run any file that ends in .py. So when you create a file, you can put that extension there. So you can say test.py and that will put a play button up here, which will run the file in the terminal. So I'm gonna stick with hello.py and I'm gonna get rid of test. So we can just right click delete and move to trash. Now, when you're working with this, you might get an interactive terminal. So if that happens, it's gonna look something like this. So if you accidentally hold shift and press enter, it'll sort of be like the idle with Python where you can type in things such as five plus five and it gives you a response. However, when we're executing our code, we don't wanna be in this interactive mode. It's just gonna complain about everything. So what we need to do is we need to exit that. You can just right click and kill terminal and that'll bring you back to normal. And now you can run your file. And there you go, it says hello world. So those are the basics. And if you have any issues, you can just go up to the top here and go into the help and search it. So for example, if you're looking for a new theme, you can go to color theme and it'll show you how to find it. So maybe leave in the comments what your favorite theme is and I'll try it out. But other than that, let's get started with lists. I'm gonna collapse this just to get a little bit more room, get rid of this line. And then here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a list of healthy foods. So we'll call it healthy and then use an equal sign, which is the assignment operator and then square brackets. Square brackets indicate a list and you can put multiple elements in it separated by commas. So we all know the world's healthiest food, even if you don't wanna admit it, and that is pizza. And just as a little bit of a review from the previous series I did, you can use single quotes or double quotes for your strings, that's totally fine. So I can go in here and use pizza with single quotes, and then I could go in and put frozen custard in double quotes. So this is my diet plan, this is why I am so ripped. So if you wanna get on my level, just stick to my diet plan, you will not regret it. Now the important thing to understand about lists and Python is that they are dynamic. So in other programming languages, let's say you're coming from Java. In Java, there is an array, and this array is statically sized. When I say statically sized, what that means is the size is determined when you're writing the code and you cannot increase the size of the array dynamically. This can cause a problem because you, know, you might wanna add data later, so they had to come out with a different variation of an array, which is called an array list. And this one can grow and expand as you add more elements. Well, in Python, there's no concept of a static array or a static list. We just have list and it's already dynamic for us. So we do not have to worry about numerous data structures. We just have one that can grow or shrink. This seems simple, but it's actually very awesome because it's going to make our lives a whole lot easier. So what we can do is we can go in here and we can say healthy dot append and put parentheses and put some data in here. So we can add another element in here and we can put something in like apple crisp. And I don't know what my capitalization standards are here. I'm just gonna put everything lowercase just to keep it consistent. All right, there we go. So let me explain what's going on here. When we create healthy, the list, it's actually an example of an object. And an object is a very general term, but the main thing you need to understand is that whenever we are working with an object, we can often put a dot and then some other word to access this object's members. So healthy is an object of type list, and lists have some special things they can do, including append, which allows us to append extra data into this list. If any time you need to see the list, you can just say print and put in healthy. Running this, and it'll show up down here, pizza, frozen custard, and apple crisp. So let's talk about this append here for a moment just to get everybody on the same page, or at least the same book. This is an example of a method. 
And a method is just a function that is attached to an object. So it's a lot of vocabulary if you're new here. So again, I have that really beginner series if you need it, but we're gonna, just gonna keep going and keep the pace. But essentially a method is a function attached to an object. So a function being a sequence of statements, well, a method is the same exact thing, but it's specifically related to this list called healthy. A method is different than a standalone function because a standalone function is not attached to any specific object. So for example, there's the len function, which will tell you the length of a list or a string. And in this situation, you actually have to pass in your object as an argument. So when you do this, it's going to return a value and we, can, we could assign that to a variable if we wanted and then we could print it like so. So running this and we get the value three because there's three elements in our list of healthy foods. So this is an example of a function. Print is another example of a function that we'll be using a whole lot in this series. And when you invoke a function, you often have to pass in data, which is known as an argument. So healthy is an example of an argument. With print, we're passing in length as an argument, but we could pass in multiple arguments as well. So for example, I could pass in a string and then separate these by commas. So now we have two arguments. We have a string called length and then the actual length data. So running this and it says length is three. So that is your basics, getting up to speed with creating lists and adding data to the list, as well as invoking methods and functions. Now we're going to get some practice working with the list and seeing some of the different things we can do. So stay tuned for that. Now I promise I'm not gonna run this into the ground the whole series, but I really don't wanna to have to explain all of the absolute basic things over and over again. So if you found this video to be challenging and you're not sure you're gonna keep up, don't quit, don't do that, don't be lame. Instead, go to the beginner Python series and watch through that because that's gonna talk about every single thing from the absolute beginning. So that is all I got for you in this one. Stay tuned for the next one. I'm, I'm pretty excited, so hopefully you are as well, and let's get learning.